Hello everybody, Average Gamer here. Welcome to just a quick little announcement. So today, no stream, but... Uh, well, and I'll get into that momentarily. You'll probably hear the noise before I tell you. Um, but yeah, so today I want to do a bit of a... Um, State of the Union in regards to our Austral-Asian Empire. Um, since I won't be streaming, um, main reason, you might start hearing it soon, you'll hear a compressor going off. Um, I've got some gentlemen here working on my roof. Um, so... They're gonna, they're gonna be in and out of the house, and um, they got a couple compressors because obviously they're using tools and stuff like that. So, um, or wishes, whichever you prefer, if you believe in you know, magic. Um, but yeah, so they're gonna be uh, they're they're basically ripping apart my roof. They're actually almost fifty percent done, and they've only been doing it for not even a full day. So I'm actually impressed with that. Um, but yeah, so see, there you go. Don't know if you guys can hear that in the background, but that is the compressor for uh, for the nail guns and uh, staple guns and stuff. So, yeah, they're doing the roof right now, ripping things apart, clearing things up, getting it nice and all uh, all done up. Um, but because of that, and because they're in and out of the house, and the air conditioning's off, and all that stuff, um, I am not in the mood to just sit in front of my computer for three or four hours. Um, and I'm going to be interrupted every five, 10 minutes. Cause they're going to need something to go into the attic, possibly whatever. So I figured no stream. We'll just there. Oh, finally over. Um, uh, we're just going to kind of go over a state of the union, talk about where the country sits, what the plans are going to be long-term and things like that. And we're going to do that over the next, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So first off, when it comes to, um, we're going to go with the state here. So right now, we're not really supporting anyone anymore. Uh, we've taken a lot of our government support. We're still supporting some governments, but we're not giving them any money at this point. So it's not really affecting anything like it normally would. Basically, normally when you affect, when you support governments, you're basically just giving them money over time, and you're basically just buying their goodwill. Um, that will obviously um, be tweaked out um, as the as as time goes on. Same with insurgencies. We don't. We're not supporting any insurgencies. We don't have any spies right now or anything like that. Um, though, long term, I do have the idea, possibly, of doing what we did as um, as Vietnam and forcing a country to basically declare war on me by utilizing spies. And basically causing problems with just that country and have that country declare war on me. But uh, that's another here. Another. Finances. Well... Inflation is actually sitting pretty good, She's sitting at one point or four point four percent, which is good. Unemployment is a little high, uh, is 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 not that high. It's only at four point four. Um, to help with production costs and things like that, I wouldn't mind seeing that up just a little higher. Um, that also tells me too that we have a lot of building to do. We have a population of just eighty five million. Um, it's not that much. Our GDP is fifteen hundred eighty two bucks. Um, I believe when we started it was twelve hundred something like that. So. It's getting up there slowly. Right now, I believe the computer's controlling the tax rate. No, I am. We're sitting at 70%. So that's a pretty good. Overall, well, if we take out another uh, uh, A bond, we've never actually taken out any. Um, but we get 3.5% interest on it. But yeah, it's no big deal. Overall, we're sitting at a 69.5% official tax rate. Because this... Is never really your tax rate because everything gets a little tweaked, right? That's just the overall average. Um, our overall social spending is we're spending everything at roughly, on average, of uh, 58.6. So your average tax rate is 69.5. When you come down here to taxation, you know, you can click on each thing separately and kind of, you know, fiddle and fart around. But overall, like you see this thing right here, right? So taxation for corporate taxes is sitting at 46.5, even though technically we're sitting at 70. So there you go. Um, overall approval rating, we're sitting at a 16.2. We're no longer a democracy. We are a um, utopian uh, democracy, meaning I am the leader and I don't care about you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we're doing good there. Overall for monthly income or daily income, we're sitting at a bit of 50% loss. So right now we basically are losing money when it comes to our expenditures. So, you know, our social spending, military spending, production, all that stuff, but we're doubling up the difference with our trades. That's pretty good. 
So we're making roughly around 30 million, excluding a few other things here. Um, resources, agriculture, we're completely self-sufficient. Rubber, completely self-sufficient. Timber, we're, we're needing to work a little bit more on timber. Oil, we've... Uh, did I finish the... Um, oh, there's the compressor again. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, we did finish the oil rigs. I'm going to have to try and figure out something with the oil rigs, or oil in general. Because we don't have... We have access to oil, if I show you. But we don't have access to really good oil. But we've got a little here. I was going to say there, but Sulu, when, in when Indonesia surrendered, took a chunk of it. Um, we do have a little bit here, but we've already tapped it. Uh, yeah, we tapped that up there a little bit. So, I mean, we have oil. We just don't have a lot of it. And a lot of oil in the ocean there. So, one of the ideas, one of the plans is... Possibly to move the troops that are now being sent here. To actually send them towards Venezuela. So, go after Panama. Go after the Canal Zone. Go after Colombia. And go after Venezuela and take all of this. And that will give us tons of oil and tons of wood, for example, too. Um, they're really good in timber, which is something we need to work on. Um, but the countries themselves are going to be, obviously, what we're also going to have to take on, right? So, their agriculture is pretty much okay. Rubber production is not the best. Uh, their timber production is almost on par. Oil, obviously, just for Colombia alone is amazing. Coal is good. Metal ore is good. Don't have to worry about uranium for them. Ooh, actually, I think Colombia is actually right for the picking. They might be my first target, excluding the uh, the U.S. There, I might have to send troops in. Well, the problem is that their oil production is not the best, so we would still have to go after Venezuela for just the basically the oil. They're behind in consumer goods. They're behind in power production. They're behind in metal ore, coal. Obviously, petroleum they're doing really good. Timber they're behind in. Obviously, rubber they'll be behind in agriculture. So, Venezuela, when we take a, when we take that on, will be more of a hit to our economy. So, I probably won't take all of Venezuela. What I'll probably try to do is take this area of it at least. I mean, they've got... Oh no, they do have the oil things there. Because I just want the stuff in the water over here. Because that, that, and that are worth their weight in water gold. <laughs> so, I might try to take a lot of their coastline. Or I might just try to take them. Cut them out. And then there you go. Um, or even try to, once we start expanding up into um, all these occupied territories by the Americans, maybe. We'll start to exploit all the oil down here i don't really know or even just maybe skip and just kind of go after cuba real quick and grab a bunch of their oil um or we can also flex our muscles obviously down here in europe or sorry europe well, that's europe but over here in uh in the middle east and maybe get involved a little bit the only problem is that germany as you can see controls a nice big chunk of territory down here so which we'll get into we'll get into the map so for oil we're okay, but we need growth for oil. We need we need more more stuff for oil. Uh, we might start going into the, the inner land, maybe. Maybe go after Burma here. Go after Siam. Go after Cambodia and Vietnam. And just go for the lower impact oil, but then also, at the same time, collect a lot of the other resources, too, theoretically. That wouldn't be too bad. Uh, that's all coal. No, no, we do have petroleum left. Okay. Uh, next up. Uh, yeah, power is good, consumer goods are good, industrial goods are good. We just need to work on getting better at that, at producing. Military goods are extremely favorable. We're stocking up, obviously, to... Ooh, actually, we got to change that. We're supposed to be stocking up for the war against the states. So there's that. Um, and yeah, we're stocking up there. Um, yeah, for science-wise, we are ridiculously um situated here for example this is a 1999 tank that we're researching for digital social services urban rural rural 2 is a year 2000 tech we're researching that 
uh, missile design improvements in 1984 tech. Satellite television. It's a 60s tech, so that's a little not too far ahead, but it is. Um, coal generation. It's a 2001 tech. We're, we're quite ahead there. Uh, upgraded petroleum generation. 2003 tech. We're, we're up there. 1986 naval production. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So overall, we're about, on average, 30 to 40 years advanced in comparison to where we should be. So you look at the timeline, we're only about 30 or 40 years ahead. We got a lot of tech going on. We've, um, don't want to use the word bootstrapped, but we've uh, prioritized um, advanced construction. So we can get the advanced industrial, advanced consume, uh, commercial, and advanced military good facilities up and running ASAP and dark matter. We're, we're prioritizing those. That's pretty much it for research. I mean, we're maxed out as much as we can do on research. For military production, we're building T-72s as our tanks, IOF-2s as our infantry fighting vehicles, um, the Aslaf Coyote, uh, the, basically the Coyotes, or the Canadian Forces Coyote, or the LAV-25, as it's known in most uh, other areas of the world, um, <clears throat> or the Moag Piranha 4, because they're the ones that make it. Um, yeah, it's the, I think General Dynamics has like the rights to build it or something. I don't know. It might even be a, a General Dynamics defense systems designed based on the Piranha. But I can't remember. But anyways, the LAV-25, we're building it as a recon unit. Um, we're also using the LAV-25 Bison. So the 24, well actually... Okay, yeah. so we're using also the, the basically the armored uh, personnel carrier version of the same scout, of the, the unit we're using as a scout. We're going to be using it as a throwaway unit. By that, I mean what I'm going to be doing, if I can uh, click on y'all, they're going to be holding the line because they have a higher defense than our, IF, our IOF-2s. So our IOF-2s, if you double click on it here, So it's got nice surface attacks, right? Five kilometer, one kilometer, but it is 21, 85, 18. Lab 25, on the other hand, 22, 18, 22. So it's okay, but the IOF is just a little bit less in soft attack and in close attack, but it's higher in hard attack. So overall to me, it's really the better tank, or the better, the better, the better unit. Though, the LAV is good against soft targets and close quarters, while the IOF two is going to be better with obviously armor. So, the plan is to use the Bison's because of their defensive stats. So their defensive stats are 22, 22, and 16. So 22 for soft, 22 for hard, and 16 defense for anti-air well the iof2 is 21 20 and 13 so it's good just not as good as the iof2 so our plan is to use the iof2 as more of a going down roads going down railroads uh going down streets and actually pushing that way with support with artillery and all sorts of other stuff and then the then the lav 25s will be that's annoying <laughs> there we go the lot 25s will then be um used as more of a a punch mechanic where we'll see a weakness pull a bunch of back a bunch of the the, the lot 25 and p push specifically in whole along the american line so the plan right now is to use their defense as the good thing right so they're going to sit here they're going to take a lot of this firepower from the americans and then what we'll do is we'll take the iof twos and a few other guys and they'll punch up take a spot and then withdraw what the hope of that will be will be to slowly draw down the american forces the american military and then that will basically cause them to uh 
basically just smash up against our, our defensive position here, defensive wall, and it will basically put us in a position where we won't have to worry too much about the fact that they outnumber us. And I want to say by a lot, but I think that's even an understatement. Um, they outnumber me. Boop. So they have 5 million troops. We have almost 100, er, 800,000. So I want to say they outnumber us, what, 5 to 1? We'll say. Give or take. So. It's quite the... You know, quite the thing so i mean they can also outproduce us as well right they have 60 ground production we have 20 they have 22 air production we have 10 they have nine naval though and we have 10 naval but we have something no one else has we have missile production we are actually able to produce missiles well they cannot so when it comes to our production of our military one of the things we will be utilizing is that missile production Right now, when it comes to production, oh, and we're also building, uh, we're using the Piranha anti-tank units, heavy supply trucks, the Shortland M23 anti-air units, um, bah, 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 bah. and the GC45 155 millimeter howitzer, because this is what we have right now, and I know a lot of people are like, well, why don't you buy A, why don't you buy B, why don't you buy C? Just because you can buy it doesn't mean it's available to you. A lot of countries right now aren't willing to sell me stuff. And if they want to sell me stuff, it's ridiculously expensive. And I don't want to pay for stuff. So, for aircraft-wise, we're building F5 Tigers. The reason why we're building F5 Tigers is because they take a max missile size of 4, and they can take up to 72 missiles. And we're building bullpups that are size 2. So these things will be able to be loaded on mass on these F5 Tigers. And all these F5 Tigers are gonna do is fly around and lob these missiles at people as well. So that way that's gonna give us a little bit of a, a little bit of help. So the bull pup though, it does have the catch where it is only a 16 kilometer uh, range. So our aircraft will have to get, like say for example, if we wanna get the guys coming down this way, they will have to get pretty dang close to lob the missiles, but I am not concerned. Um, we're also building, what else are we building here? Um, S1 anti-shipping missiles as well. They're size four with a 34 uh, kilometer range. So anti-shipping missiles, they're not the best missiles. I mean, they're, you know, some of the, you know, first era missiles type thing so they're not the good ones yet but as we unlock things and as we research things we're getting better missiles and we will soon have all the missiles we need um obviously we're also building tu-95 bears to do some strategic bombing uh mig-21s to get uh air uh you know air superiority with the interceptors um naval wise we're building some athabascans it's a lake in northern alberta we're building a whole bunch of those destroyers. We're also building a bunch of beach class destroyers. We're currently researching the Halifax class destroyer, which should be replacing the Athabascan um, or the beach. I can't remember which it's replacing. Now we have the S9 Oberon, which is a very slow moving um, attack submarine, but when I say but, it is pretty good. Um, I'll just say in tests, the US Navy is kind of boned. Uh, with our fleet already positioned here, with these uh, four destroyers and these destroyers and escorts and attack subs, we're pretty much going to take out the the British Navy, the, the British Navy, the American Navy, pretty well. Uh, we're not going to be a big concern or worry. Um, overall, we only have, like I said, eight hundred thousand units, so we are going to have a bit of a an uphill fight. By no means is this going to be an easy fight. Um, We'll have to, like I said, we're going to be building up our, our supply when it comes to military goods. And once we hit, you know, a couple million, a uh, couple million tons, that's when we'll be ready to declare war. That's when we'll be ready to go after the Americans. I want to have tons of stocks built up, tons of fuel, which I need to actually make sure that we're stockpiling as well. 
And we also want to up the price so that we can actually stockpile more faster. But yeah, we want to stockpile oil for our vehicles. We want to stockpile uh, military goods, obviously, so they have, you know, bullets and food. Um, and yeah, and then we're going to go off to the States next week on Monday. Um, unless I decide I want to go after Central America slash the northern parts of Central America first. Honestly, though, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go after the United States. Only because the United States is my major competitor right now in the Pacific. Um, we bring up oops, the Empire screens here. So this is us right now. We've got these islands here. We've got, obviously, all of Indonesia. Um, Malay. Haven't taken on um, the lands of the Kiwis yet. We got our little territory down here, up here. We have our island here. Um, we have our little colony over here. And that's about it. We have no footprint in Europe. No real big footprint. Well, actually, we do have. I think it was Costa Rica that I took out. Um, no, that's that's El Salvador. I can't remember who this used to be. Yeah, Costa Rica. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we're in a position where we can now have power projection so we're going to do that united states as you can see it's taking a lot of territory i know once the united states falls canada is going to get a chunk newfoundland and labrador are going to get a chunk um i might just give quebec independence i don't know yet um when it comes to germany they are the official biggest threat um just because there's just they're just so big um like it's almost impossible for them to to surrender. Um, who are they at war with right now? They're at war with the Ottomans and the Chinese. And the Ottomans are... There. So the Ottomans are about to basically surrender. And then we'll give the, Amer the Germans almost all control of... Oh, the Middle East, most of Asia, and huge chunks of Europe. China is doing pretty good, but if they fall to the Germans, that brings the Germans over to the Pacific. So there might be a quick change up in our plans, and I might switch over to attack the Chinese, because that will give me hopefully the ability then to kind of keep the the germans away from me but the problem is then if i'm fighting if i fight china and i take china and china surrenders to both us and germany at the same time we will then at that point be bordering germany and i do not want to be bordering germany at this point because germany is declaring war on everybody and everything that it, that's near it but at the same time population in in, in germany is almost 300 million China is 300 million. So, I mean, I'm kind of in a spot right now where Germany is the biggest threat globally. The United States is the biggest threat locally to me. Um, and China is the biggest threat to me when it comes to losing, meaning they could lose their war. So, we're probably going to shift away from the germans at least and make it so that the germans don't really worry about us too much and we're going to go after the americans um we're going to try to take north and south america for ourselves bring the austral asian empire and the emus to the americas that also gives us a jump off spot if we want to into europe across the the, you know, the atlantic that also gives us a more defensive location. So say we do go to war with the Germans. They have to do an amphibious invasion at that point. I mean, they have to now, and it would be harder unless they're in China, then they come straight down, right? So this at least gives, spreads me out a lot more, which I don't mind. I'm, you know, having more territory, not a bad thing. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so in the next, uh, next live stream on Monday, we are going after the United States. 
Um, then after that, we'll have to reevaluate and decide if we want to go up to Germany after that. And uh, take down Germany or just solidify our stance in North and South America. I figure I'll probably consolidate in North America for a little bit. Take out Canada. Take out Newfoundland and Labrador. Swing south and capture all of this. So then we'll be the basically the pan-eurasian empire at that point um go in and get rid of all these little islands and all these little territories that includes the philippines japan and taiwan come in and kind of clean all this up so we will control all of it um and then basically once we have japan taiwan the philippines then go in and slowly just advance up the siamese peninsula here and just go in this way and hope that I can just keep expanding up this way. Because once I get a nice defensive line here, it's just a matter of slow rolling west. And basically just declaring war on everybody we come across. And then whenever we get to a, like a spot here, we can put troops there, troops there. And then we have a nice little, basically a extra troops, which we can then withdraw and, and say do an invasion down here or do an invasion here. Or even do a second front and open up a second front on the Germans somewhere even closer, like come into the, you know, into England or whatever and clear that up. Um, I'm also tempted to go after someone small, someone near Europe. So I have a jump off point if I want to, to kind of cause problems. Like I'm looking at like Northern Ireland, because Northern Ireland is pretty, pretty well off so for example if i put a naval force here and a naval force here both neither can get at me from either angle unless they have an arrangement with ireland and right now ireland itself has no has no friends so i can kind of use this straight here as a good little buffer and use that to kind of hit back into say german occupied england with uh, with aircraft and you know land amphibious units along this area though the problem here is that scotland does control a lot of the coastline up here well england obviously controls the land so there is the idea too of maybe landing taking scotland immediately swinging down taking over europe proper or sorry england proper and then just hopefully jumping right across the channel real quick like say right here right the pas de calais and just running into running right into germany or even running from here to here um, you know, using the location here at Brest and going from Plymouth and going straight down. Something that I can use as basically a way to start an additional front. Now, I could, I don't know if Germany really has that many troops in Germany or not. Like, I could possibly bring a large mass of troops in and get really, really chummy with Denmark declare war on Germany and then just invade through Denmark and go right after the capital. I could do that theoretically because I think a lot of their units are out here out in the, the far East. So theoretically we could come in and take a huge chunk, if not all of mainland Germany itself in one swift motion. So there's that idea too um but right now me and germany we're really good friends we're gonna deal with europe they're gonna deal with asia and africa let them deal with those territories we got the americas they get the larger piece of the pie for now and then we're gonna come in and uh take our slice from theirs with that in mind thanks for watching everybody once again 1 p.m eastern standard monday supreme ruler ultimate the war against america begins ish depending on if we can get our military resources up high enough thanks for watching bye, -bye.